Let's make a low relief building and a broken down ruined bridge. Stay tuned and all will be revealed. Well, good afternoon everyone and welcome back to Piccadilly. Now, this was the scene you saw at the end of the last video. In fact, it's only about a couple of hours after the last video went out. So that glue, although it's drier than it was, is still sopping wet. <laughs> but anyway, what I need to do first is to do some work at both ends of the platforms. So obviously here and down there, as I explained in the last video. Now here, what I need to do is level the land off. So it looks as if it's coming out from the platform height. Now that is in preparation for a relief building. It's actually, it will literally just be five to 10 millimeters of the building, which starts around about here, give or take. And then obviously that will then stop at this point uh, though. so my first job then is to cut this part of the platform and i'm going to cut it slightly at an angle as if it's pointing back towards that corner and then cut out that um, piece there and any remaining triangles that might be underneath all right so there we go that's that bit done and then that bit will glue on the top like that and then i will use uh, masking tape, maybe with some tiny little bit of screwed up newspaper in these sections. Masking tape that down over there, across like that, so it goes over that part of the platform, and then papi mash over the whole lot. There you go, so I'll let that dry, get it painted up, and we're ready to move on to the next stage. Mm, so, welcome back. You can see now I've gone ahead and papi mache this well you saw that in the last clip but i've also now painted it and it's literally just um this area here will be a path which i shall put on separate now what i've done 3d printers as you can probably imagine and that will fit nicely into there so that is literally just a frame then i created a facade a front if you like now this is it is ever so slightly guesswork um, because I can't see the actual building. It is hidden by trees, so I'm having to interpret what's there. I can't physically find any other pictures of this aspect of the building. I'm gonna go with the fact that it's got three windows and they are separately fitted. They will be glazed on this occasion because the panes are quite big. Um, so you've got three glazed, three panes there. This will be brick papered and one paper will be on this bit. And because that's an extension, a lean to extension, that will be a separate brick paper as per the real thing. OK, welcome back. So you can see I've chosen this um, weathered ashlar and this buff type colour. Um, I don't think either are perfect, um, but they are the closest that i've got i don't really want to be spending huge amounts of money to be honest with you so i think both of these will be absolutely fine and bearing in mind that it's going to be covered with trees anyway so i'm really not going to worry or so as you can see i'm just using a glue stick that will then be glued onto there like that now there is a ridge across that point there so just pressing that in, making sure it's nice and tight up against there, pressing it down like so. Nice off there like that to that point. And I'll just cut that back off like that. That, oops, not quite. That bit like that. Okay. So I'll go ahead now and put this piece on and I'll come back and show you what I do with the windows. So what I do for the windows is you can see I've got the hole of the back there. So I literally just take from one side through to the other. Now this is a brand new blade and because 
the paper is covered with glue, it's slightly softer. Now, as you've seen, I use a glue stick to put this on. And then with the blade, I just press it like that. Just press each side in. Just press it down and press it down. Like that. Just rub it over with the side of the blade and then just press those bits away. Welcome back. So you can now see I've gone ahead and obviously the brick paper you saw, but uh, varnished it with a matte varnish and then gone over the streaking down with some null oil and then some white over the top of the window sills and then the odd tiny little bit of salting in varying places and that's literally just dab it on with a brush but anyway i thought i'll show you what i'm going to do next so obviously i'm going to glue the roof on um, and that will go kind of like that with a slight overhang and then cut that to the length and then stick that underneath the eaves um, this bit actually sits on that corner there so i need to trim this back ever so slightly so that it sits probably slightly short of that end and then just slice off a little bit this end that type of thing and then obviously there's another piece of roof which will go in there right so there you go you can see the roof the gutters um there's funny tiles on the corner there they are on the real building and the windows have been glued to a piece of acetate. I'm not going to show you that. I think that will be fairly obvious what I've done by this for that. Now, um, you probably can just about make out these two very fine strips, which I'm going to use as gutters. Now, to give you an indication of what I've done, as you can see, 0 0.4 millimetres round. And all I'm going to do is just create a little bit of a dog leg kind of like that hopefully you can just about see that just move it so you can camera focuses and i'm going to grip it by that bit just there and you can probably hopefully just about make out a dribble of super glue which i've done there like that all right and then this particular one, although well, that's not very straight, is right. it? So next time you see this, it will be on the layout. So what's next? I think it'll be that bridge. Right, next up, now going over to the bridge. Now, looking closely at it, it's actually a three arch viaduct that's actually there. So why I'm planning to do it, you may remember a few months ago, I made a viaduct which um, comes out of Dinting and New Mill Central on the layout and heads towards Hadfield and it goes over a girder bridge. You might remember that. Now, this is exactly the same um, cut. Well, I've come on with it since the last clip. You can see now I've cut out the part of the platform ready to accept the bridge. And you can also see the bridge is a slightly different shape. It's not a pure round arch. It's square sides and then um, a round arch type top, more like that. Now, you might be thinking, well, why have you gone ahead and made the whole bridge well i haven't if you notice the hatch marks there that's the bits to be cut away but the reason i've done it like this because i thought it would be easier to build it as a complete bridge and then sort of destroy it if you like and so what i need to do now is to get this cut and into the separate components and then get each component cut into or covered with the brick paper so i will Right, here we are. Now, forgive me if I sound a little bit croaky. Somehow developed a cold in the last 
few hours and uh, so there we go that's the way life is sometimes now this is the bit that I mean obviously you can see I've now chopped it up as I said I would do in the last video or last clip but I've also started putting some of the detailing on so there's this like um, string here um, you've got these uh, keystones or whatever they're called going around the top inside and there and that strap going underneath there and there is a little bit of the strap on there as well. Right, there we go. That's about as much as I'm going to do for this video. So as you saw before, the bridge now has been cut into two main pieces. I'll show you this piece first. So obviously it has been uh, matte varnished all over, top, bottom, inside, everything. And then I went over with some black wash and literally just created streaks coming down. There doesn't appear to be an awful lot of um, salting on this building. So I've not put any on, it's as simple as that really. And the same with that bit there as well. Um, the top, I have just put some ballast on top of that and some scatters. In fact, if you look closely, you might even make out some static grass there. You, you just about make it out. It is a bit difficult to see, but uh, it is there. And that will be added to quite significantly when I do the scenery down the main part. Um, moving that out of the way. And this unit here now, uh, you can see all the strings, um, pieces running across here, this this arched brickwork, the string running through there and round there has been that added. There is concrete for the road and I put more ballast in there, inside there to represent the hardcore that would you be used as a, as a road surf or the road foundation if you like so that was painted gray a little bit and different or well, dark gray and a light gray hence that um that bit there um thanks to don coffee for doing a uh, cab ride right into hadfield station i know i can't believe it and it couldn't have been any better time to be honest because i discovered this and you can go and have a look yourself um i can't show you the video but on the approach to Hadfield, you go under this bridge, obviously, the complete version, and it got, it seemed to be like this plating running across the top. But looking at Google Street Maps, uh, the street view, I mean, um, it's actually a fence. And that fence obviously runs across the whole top. Now, as I'm producing this building as a dilapidated version, a demolished version, ruins if you like. I've, um, obviously I've only put in a small amount and the beam that was holding it has been cut. And I've even put a piece of fence running across that way. So if anybody did go down there, they can't get very far. Now, the other part of this is that, that lump on the bottom there, that represents the um, ground at the back there now what i will do is when i come to foliage this up i will put some foliage going kind of into there but that bit because there's no light getting to it will remain well like that really so i'll just show you that and that's literally just had some scatters over it so that won't be any more and uh, so uh, I had to sand the back on the disc sander to get that to fit inside because inevitably it wasn't going to fit, was it? So, but anyway, so that's that's all been sanded down. But that's that. So I'm quite pleased with the way that's turned out. And I think once the whole scene has been completed and it's positioned on the layout as well, and this slopey section, which will go in front, is placed, I think that will that will really really add to the scene completely. Now, the other parts that I showed at the beginning of this video was that, um, the steel factory. Now, just remember that this roof here does go back quite a long way and it rises up to probably about that height at its peak. 
it's not a tall building by any means but there is more roof than i've shown there and it does look a little bit lacking um, this roof will continue on slightly beyond the building but i will paint that and i'll just put it onto the back scene when i do the pack do the painting of the back scene so i'm quite pleased with the way again that's all turning out and obviously i've got the ground all sloped down here ready for trees to go in here i should probably use some uh, sea foam type trees for this bit so i want them all nice and wispy looking so that will be there so one little trek down the platform in fact it was nice watching the don coffee video because i was able to spot things that are there now that i didn't put in in the first place so you know it's certainly making a difference anyway i'll leave the video there i hope you've enjoyed it and i will catch you again very soon here on piccadilly with the next bit of the hatfield build take care and bye bye